further ado then, I think we'll just jump right in and let's get, let's get building and designing. Let's keep in mind also ask those questions. If you want me to explain something, Osra will tap me on the shoulder and say, Raji, hey, explain. So let's just jump right in. All right, so let's kind of step back a bit and look at what we've done the last couple of times on this stream. So on this stream, we're building a fictitious app. Uh, we named it Switchy. It's a, uh, it's a website that's for streaming Switch games. Uh, we've done all sorts of things. We've created a little nav bar. We've created some input fields, but only just that search field now. So we're gonna need to do a little bit more work on that. We've created an avatar component here. We've created a user status component, all sorts of things like a card. Uh, this could be like a grid view where you would see uh, somebody is playing this game. And you can see over here that we actually set up a grid. And that grid is pretty cool. We shared some cool tricks about how we can set up this grid uh, as a stretchy grid. And then we can actually tell these components, set the constraints to left and right. And this was kind of the big reveal last time. Uh, as you stretch this left and right, you can actually see that these, these card items and these larger, uh, these larger videos are actually staying on that grid and they're honoring the margins, they're honoring, honoring the gutters. Uh, so that was a cool reveal that was pretty fun to learn. We also set up a mobile nav a couple of uh, streams ago. So now we're gonna be talking about forms and form elements. I'm gonna try to have some fun here. Let's keep it simple and easy. I'm not gonna move too fast here because we don't have a lot of ground to cover, but I'm gonna go ahead and try to pause and wait for those comments. But really what I wanted to do is just try to come up with a simple sign up form. So let's say you needed to sign up to stream here and you needed to give a reason for this stream. I just wanted to represent a few different things. So I just wrote down here in my little, uh, my little text box here, I just wrote, hey, here's what we need. I, probably a first name, a last name, an email, Let's do a description box because I think we'll also want to demonstrate what a larger text box may look like. Uh, maybe there's like a I'm of age to be able to stream, uh, mostly just because I want to be able to make a checkbox and then some kind of a submit button. Let's go and see what we've already created. So I'm going to come on up here. I'm going to zoom up and I'm going to see we've created a few things, but these are just barely started. So we've got this input. We've got a focused input and we've got this primary button, but that's really all we've got for form items. Now we did actually use that input here. So we may do a little bit of uh, damage and havoc and break some of these things because we're gonna be messing with them, but we will fix them. I'm gonna go ahead and move these three master components onto this canvas. And I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control G. Let's see here. I'm gonna go ahead and hit Control G to turn off my grids. Ha, huh. yeah, Nassim says, forgot I read, I read the terms and conditions, privacy policy checkbox. Yes, absolutely, we need that too. So right now I'm not gonna really work on the grid. What I'd like to do is just kind of get a sense of how these elements look next to each other and get a sense of uh, like the sizing and all of that. So we know a few things here. I'm gonna create a better list of what I need. This is the exact fields that I need but I'm gonna write down realistically the components that I'm gonna need. So I'm gonna need a button component, and I'll probably need a secondary, like a primary button and a secondary button. We don't necessarily need secondary for this, but we'll go ahead and make both. So I'll put a primary button, secondary button, and I'm gonna put like a, what's a disabled button? These are all sort of the normal things that we might build uh, for our website. So we're gonna need like a disabled button. I can't tell you how many times I have made and restyled buttons like this. Disabled button, uh, there probably need to be like an active or focused button. All right. All right, cool, so those are gonna be under buttons. So those will be what we need there. All right. Okay, so next we're gonna need fields, so input fields. So I'm just gonna put inputs here. And for these inputs, I'd really like all of them to be very cohesive and feel like they all exist in the same family. But we're gonna need like a, a one-liner or I might just put like a text field. Uh, and then we're gonna need like a multi-line text field. 
And then we're going to need like a disabled, all of these things as well, disabled text field, et cetera, et cetera. We're going to need an active. What happens when somebody focuses the cursor? You can see here, hey, this is probably what that's going to look like. Except for I don't like it so much. We're going to, we're going to mess with that a little bit. And then we're going to need the same thing here, like, okay, probably our checkboxes as well. So just give me a little to-do list here. We got a lot of stuff to build. So we'll just put a normal, default, disabled. All right, so I haven't, a lot of times on Build It in Figma, I do not prep ahead of time. Uh, I'll prep a little bit of, about what I know I want to build, but I'm not going to do too much because I want to show the whole process on stream. I want to show how you're building it from the ground up. So let's first just start with these buttons. I think buttons are fun, they're easy. Uh, let's go ahead and do that. We're going to move these two components here. We'll move this over there so we can start working on this. Now, I don't like this for a primary button. I like this is more of like a ghost button style. So this might be our secondary button. So I'm going to go ahead and just name that to secondary. I do like that. And I'll go up here and we're going to use slash naming to kind of categorize these things. So Figma automatically takes your name here, button slash primary. And in your assets panel, it'll go ahead and break that down uh, into those categories. So I think it might be under here somewhere because we're in a different frame. Um, let's see here, I probably lost it. I probably lost it under one of these. One thing to keep in mind, and you may run into this, is that because this frame is named desktop, it's actually gonna categorize it under desktop, which is a really cool thing when you're creating a design system because I could call this form elements. So maybe we should just go ahead and do that. In fact, let's, uh, I'm gonna clone this this way. I'm gonna just get rid of all these things and I'm gonna call this components. And you'll see exactly what happens here. Notice this website components. If I go into components, now you see button and then you see here button primary. And we need to rename that of course, so let's go rename that. But once again, Figma will take three different things. It'll take your page name here, website. So we might want to rename that to something else if we were going to move all these components over there. And then it'll take your frame name right here. We've got components, that's our frame name. It'll use that as part of the categorization system, almost like folders. And then it'll lastly use the slash naming. So if I wanted to, I could pull this button, put it over here, it won't be a part of any frames and I could actually just categorize it by putting in the full path here. So I could put in uh, components here and then button and then primary, but I don't want to do that. I don't want to have to do all that uh, hefty renaming work. So I'm just going to put in here, button secondary. Now let's go ahead and think about what we might need in a button. I'm going, I think this is an older button that I was working on. So I might rip this apart and do something. It didn't rename the button. Oh, thank you so much. I'm so glad I was paying attention to chat. You're awesome. Thank you, Nassim. Okay, so let's see what we've got going on with this button. This is something that I made from a previous stream. So right now what we have is we have a horizontal auto layout container here. That means I could actually just put items in this horizontal container and you can see that it's just growing. And if I duplicate these items in, you'll notice it'll duplicate, duplicate uh, along the horizontal axis and that's because it's horizontally auto layout. If we come up here, you can see that I've set this one to vertical auto layout. Now the reason I want to do that is because I want to be able to, if I want to, now I ran into this problem way back when, this is about a year ago when we had auto layout version one, is that I didn't just want a button to be a fixed size. Sometimes I wanted a button to be auto layout, but other times maybe it's a full width button or I wanted it to adhere to a grid or I wanted it to be a big, really wide button for a mobile display. And I was finding that I couldn't resize. And that's effectively like if I took this content out here, let's just put a fill on this. Um, we'll just put in a weird fill here. Notice that I can't resize this. That's because I've told it I want it to be horizontal, auto layout, but I actually want the button at times to be able to resize. So that's exactly what's going on here. I've got a horizontal auto layout content container here, 
And then its parent element, the actual button itself, is a vertical layout. And that vertical layout or vertical auto layout, that's going to be hard to say fast, uh, is actually just set to auto width right now. But if I ever decide that I just want to stretch it this way, it will be able to let it uh, do a fixed width. So this is kind of the perfect combination for me. I want both things to be true. I want to be able to, at times, be able to make it larger. Okay, so there's a few things missing here. I'd like to be able to bring potentially an icon into here if I want to, but I don't necessarily have any uh, icons here. So I'm gonna go out to the community. Now, right now, our community is in beta. Uh, hopefully it's gonna be out of beta pretty soon and everyone's gonna be able to enjoy this kind of stuff. But I'm just gonna type in icons here or at least see, hey, look, 700 UI icons. Let's give this a go. I'm gonna duplicate this file here. I'm just going to grab a few icons. I just want a few arrow icons to simulate like this submit button thing. So let's see what we've got here. I'm thinking maybe this one looks good. Do you have any solid fill icons? Looks like they're all, they're all lines. So I think we'll just grab this one arrow icon just to demonstrate this. All right. And we're going to go ahead and just put that component here. Now it brought the master component in here. You can see that by that four, uh, that four diamonds. And we'll just put icons, icons, arrow right. Or in this case, we could actually put submit because we know this is going to be a submit. Uh, if we ever need to be able to index this in our design system later, and maybe it's a submit icon, but it's also an arrow right icon, you can always come into here and type into the description and put submit, uh, circle, arrow. You can put all of your search terms in here. So then if you're ever actually in the assets panel here and you're searching, you could actually just type in submit and it should be able to pull up that because it has these other keywords in it. Super cool way to, uh, to organize uh, and give more searchability to your design systems. Okay, so let's just use this, an instance of this, and I'm gonna hold option and drag it like this. And I'm just gonna drag it right into here. And I'm gonna duplicate this here. We're just gonna use this as like a dummy icon, like an icon slot. And I'll just delete these little fellows out here. All right, so this is perfect, right? Like we have two different icon slots. So I can even rename these slots. If I want to, this would be right slot and left slot. Now, the reason I'm just calling them slots is because I can actually come in here and swap out this instance to some other icons. I can swap this out to anything. And that's what I wanna do is create this extensible button that I can do lots of things with. All right, so in this case, I actually don't really need either one of those. My default button should just be a text button. So I'm gonna go ahead and just turn the visibility of these things off. And with auto layout, it'll automatically just scrunch the button up there. I do think we ought to use the term scrunch a lot more. I think it's a great way to talk about resizing. All right, so this is our secondary button. Now we kind of did this backwards, but what I want to do is create like a structure. So a structure component is basically the underlying uh, button here. And then we're going to, we basically want something to be like the master master. Like we want this to be uh, the secondary button to be powered and the primary button to be powered by the same structure. That way they're both act exactly the same. Now, one way that we could do that is that we could just duplicate this and then detach this instance and then just recreate this as the primary component. But the problem here is that they're not linked. If I make a change to this one, this secondary one, and say I'm like, oh, it needs to have like some other things within here, like an underline or whatever, it's not gonna affect this one here. So here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna take this secondary button and I'm just gonna call this, I'm gonna call it underscore button structure. You're gonna see this pattern and I'm gonna use this pattern for the fields and everything, okay? And I can even just title it if I want to, button structure, that way I don't get lost. All right. All right, now this, what I'm going to do with this instance, all I did is just option drag this down. Now I have an instance of the button structure, I'm just gonna create a wrapper component around it. So I'm gonna 
click create component and this one will be button secondary. Now I can just do the same thing here. Take this structure component, create a wrapper component around it. Let's just make sure this is right. Yep, and I'm gonna call this button primary. Now, I'll pause in just a second, but we're gonna go ahead and make this one the primary button style. So instead of having this, uh, this stroke here, we're not gonna have a stroke on it, or we can, but I'm gonna go ahead and just fill it with this teal so it's brighter, it's more obvious, and then I'll change it to my color style of white here, and I will override this instance, and I'll call this primary button. And then on this one, secondary button. Now the great thing about having a button structure now is if for some reason I'm like, oh, actually we need a little bit more padding on the left and right, I can come into this structure here on this content and add some more padding in, and that will actually affect both the primary and the secondary. I want that relationship. Okay, I'm gonna pause just for a second, see if we have any questions. We've just gone over a few simple things, but Osra, do we have anything? Uh, not anything for right this second, so you can keep going. Oh yeah, I've kept it really simple today. All right, cool, so we've got this button structure here, great. Uh, we're going to name it with underscores so it's ignored. It's not going to get, if we ever publish this design system out, uh, anything with underscore at the beginning of a name or a dot at the beginning of the name will be ignored. So love that. That way these things can kind of be our atoms. All right, now let's do the same exact thing with our text field here. All right, so with our text field, I'm not sure what the anatomy of this thing is, but it looks like we had one icon inside of it. We also had a auto layout frame here, but we really didn't have, it's all left aligned, which I think is good. I'm not sure if we really need auto layout for this. I guess as we maybe typed into it, we might want it to get longer, but for the text field, I'm not gonna over engineer this thing and I'm not going to make it auto layout if I don't need it to be. Uh, but let's just start off and we'll just pretend that this default is our structure. So we're just going to go underscore uh, input structure here. And I need to keep myself consistent here. All right. And for the input here, we have this icon. We can actually just turn that off. Now it's not auto layout, so it won't change the size at all here. Remember, we just have it the same exact um, uh, it's just a regular frame, It's what it is. All right, let's see what else we can do here. Um, what I wanna do, I think this is good enough for my structure. So if I clone this again, and we'll just create all of our different needed elements. So let's look and see what we need here. I'm gonna bring my inputs, uh, my little note thing here so that I can see what it is that I'm gonna build. All right, so we need a regular text field. Great, let's create that component. And I'm gonna call this um, field uh, text. All right. All right. So now we need to have like a focused field. So I'm just going to option drag this top one here. And that way I've got my structure still a part of this. And I'm going to create this one into be a field um, text. And we can figure out a different naming convention for this. Sometimes people will do something like this. You might put text field and then put default. Uh, just really toy around with your naming convention to see what really works out best for you. But uh, just realize that when we slash name these things like this, it'll group and categorize these things together. So I'm going to go field text, and then this will be, um, uh, this will be focused or active. Notice here, this is how this is going to work. If I'm ever using this component and I want to swap it out, notice here, this is exactly what that slash naming will do for us. Uh, it'll actually just say here the related components. So this way your menu is not gonna get too large. It'll only have the things that are related. Like if you have a check checkbox, you might wanna switch between only checkboxes or maybe checkboxes and radio buttons or something like that. All right, so we need to make sure that we don't get lost here. So I'm gonna put in, uh, I'm just gonna put in input structure here. And then as I override this text, if I make a change to this up here, it won't affect it. So for here, I'm gonna put in a default text field. 
We're also going to need a placeholder text field. I think we'll do that as well. So let's do, um, this one's going to be the focused one. So focused text field. Okay. For focus, what I'd like to do is have that text be darker. And then I think I saw a great suggestion over here. Uh, Scott Arnold, you got a great one too. How about a validation optional text line beneath the input? Let's do that. I think that's a great idea. Uh, for this, I think we got a suggestion of maybe putting a really nice ring around this thing. So it's really, really obvious. So let's absolutely do that. So when this is focused, notice that right here on this frame, it's actually the fill isn't there. That's because it's actually a layer deeper. I always love selection colors because I can just go here and then select this little target thing and it'll target whatever element has that. Um, another good tip for you, if you're trying to select objects within a multiple nested object, but you're not quite sure like what object you're clicking, if you hold down command or control and then right click, you'll see that it'll give you the whole structure in a menu. So now I see, oh, this is what I'm on, but here, here's the anatomy going all the way down. Here's, oh, there's a text area, there's an auto layout frame. Oh, there's that input structure, cool. I love that little tip. All right, we're gonna take off this subtle fill and we're just gonna change it here to white and then we're gonna actually add a stroke. We'll do that teal stroke, maybe red. Yeah, probably not red. red. Red looks like it's maybe gonna be an error state. So there's our focus text field. Great, we've got default, we've got focused. All right, let's see what else we can do here. I think that's enough, right? What do we have? We need a multi-line, we need a disabled and an active. Why don't we skip disabled for now, because we're not gonna actually have that uh, as an example today. And then let's go ahead and do exactly what y'all are asking for. So let's see if we can add like a multi-line label in here. So let's go back to the input structure. We want everything to be within this structure. So right now, let's look at this. We don't have it as auto layout, but I think right now it might be time to do that. So let's take, let's do this. I am going to set this to auto layout. I'm gonna have it be vertically auto layout so it can grow vertically. But remember, I can always stretch it this way as well. And then we'll just add a little label. So we're gonna just put um, helper text here. And I'm gonna change this font. Now I haven't set up any font styles yet. That's okay. That wasn't really the intent of this, uh, this session. We'll go ahead and do like a medium helper text. We're gonna set it at 14 uh, for our font size. Now normally I wouldn't work like this, just eyeballing and throwing in text sizes here. Normally I would work up like a text scale and a font scale and uh, have them all set up in my text styles, but we're not doing that on this stream. I have some lighter helper text here, and I'm actually just gonna put it right into this. Oops, so now we have a problem, right? All of a sudden our container around this thing is growing, and I don't want the helper text to be within this. So what I'm gonna need to do is, uh, let's do this. I'm going to need to take these two items, and I'm gonna go ahead and group them. Now, if you ever group something and you feel like later, oh, I need it to be a frame, remember you can always just change it right here in this little drop dropdown. Um, I'd like to be able to put this auto layout padding on here and the fill and everything. I want to take all those styles, copy it, and put it on this subframe here. So I'm just going to use command option or control option C, come to this frame and command or command option V, and that should copy styles. Now, the other way that you could do that is you could actually right click, copy, paste, and just copy properties or paste properties. You can see that right there. Okay, for this one, now this parent one, I wanna go ahead and just remove the fill because I don't want the parent to look like a field. It has a lot of things in there. The other way that we could approach this, and I just thought about this now, is that we can actually, and I'm gonna back up and we're gonna do that because I think that's a better way to go about this. I like that this input is just simple and we're just gonna create like a component composite. So we're gonna call something like a, maybe a combo field or something. So this is just the structure. Now what I'd like to do is create this and this together. Why didn't anyone tell me to do this? My goodness. All right, so I'm just gonna take these two things together and I'm going to put auto layout container around them. I'm gonna hit shift A 
here. That should create an auto layout container around them. Now Figma will recognize that it's vertical. It'll see that they're on top of each other and auto sense that it should be vertical. I'm gonna put eight pixels of padding in between these things. And I'm gonna call this uh, my combo field or something like that. So I'm gonna create it in to be a component. I'm gonna put a field, um, combo maybe. Not sure if that's the right name for that. But let's see how this works. Let's see if our auto layout uh, container is helping. So if I just start typing in here, oh, we got a problem. This is what I always do like to test this thing out, see if it's working. That's not really the behavior that I want. I want this to just wrap to the other line. Now in a vertical auto layout container, you can see here that if I just hit this little button here, this is gonna stretch and it'll tell the text that it can go to the left and right in this container. So I'm gonna stretch that. And now I'm gonna start typing in and see how this responds. Ah, that's perfect. That's exactly how I would like it to respond. We can also add in a little icon if we'd like to. Yeah, now Seam said, wouldn't combo refer to a combo box? Or is this what you're actually making? I'm not actually making a combo box. And yeah, I think I was more thinking and referring to like combo fields together. So maybe we can call this something a little bit more intuitive, like an input with label or input with helper. Um, yeah. Actually, maybe we'll just call this straight up a field. Uh, the other thing I think we might need for this is uh, to not rely on placeholder text. I think we might actually need a label. So this is just a little bit of helper text that goes under the field, but we might need to have, there we go, just a text field, my goodness, we're getting there. All right, so I'm gonna create a label for this thing as well. And I'm gonna go ahead and make that label darker. And I'm gonna just create a, a uh, label component, straight up like that, nothing, nothing too wild about it. Just create this label and I'm gonna, I don't know if I need auto layout. I don't think I do. Um, and I'm just gonna have this be a standalone component that I can drop into these inputs. Now, I don't want this to be really small text. I want this to be larger text. This is gonna be the main label. And I'm just gonna put in here in the content, this is my label. Now, if I option drag this and put it in here, you'll notice as I drop it into this auto layout frame, it automatically tries to place it in there. So this is really looking good, right? This is a, I've got a label here for like, this will maybe say first name. This is gonna be the actual uh, input inside of here, the text input and some helper text. So we've got a few good things there. Let's make sure that this label is set to stretch. Is it? Let's go here. There we are, stretch. We've got this stretching and this one. Let's stretch this as well. Now, if we pull this this way, we can see now that this will perfectly stretch left and right there and that uh, text will also wrap to the next line. And let's make sure that this one is right as well. Um, let's come into this one and I'm gonna say auto size. Let's see if that works. I think we're pretty good now. Great. All right. Let's start dropping these things into our mockup and see how they work. Uh, normally I might put some little labels to the left of these to kind of guide people through my design system. Uh, I also might not put them in a frame because as soon as you put these components inside of a frame, you actually lose their labels. And maybe I'll just want them out here like this so I can see everything. Now, the only reason I really was working on that white canvas is because I wanted to see what they would look like on that. So people have varying perspectives on whether or not you wanna put them all in a frame or not, it's up to you. Just realize that that frame will help you to uh, categorize them as well. Yeah, I think that Dinesh said uh, we could actually hide certain things for different use cases, and that's totally true. The cool thing about auto layout is when I actually clone this item, I take a duplicate of this, I can actually come into this label and just turn it off, and this will automatically resize uh, based off of whether or not those things are in there. So you can actually pack all kinds of goodies and helpers inside of these things. Like, what, what happens if we need a little error icon? Like, where do we put that? So maybe we should do that real quick, because like, what if a field is missing something? Maybe we need a little error icon in there. So I think we've got some icons here. Let's see if we can find something without actually having to 
redesign it. Let's see if we can find something that, uh, that works for like an error icon. Otherwise, we can just put in a uh, exclamation point. I think that's easy enough. Yeah. I think we'll just put in an exclamation point and make our own icon. All right, let's do that. Let's find the one icon that we had. Now, if we ever can't find our icons, uh, we can always go into assets and see if we have it right here. Uh, we have all sorts of stuff here. Oh, look at this, there's a little arrow icon. Go ahead and use that. All right, so we're now going to, let's say we wanna be able to get to this input structure here and we can't find it, we don't know where it's at. You can always right click on this and go to master component and it'll zoom you right to that master component. All right, so right now we have this right icon, ah, and we didn't actually set this up right uh, because we created this to be auto layout and actually we did not want it to be, did we? Now, if we turn it back on, it works, great. Okay, so let's see how we might be able to bring in an error icon. So if we have this icon here and we just drop this down, now I don't know what this is actually called, it's called alert 24. If I come into here and I'm looking for alert 24, uh, it's really hard to navigate these things. And as you get more and more items in your design system, you may find this to be very hard to navigate. So we can always just type in alert here. And if we decide that we want to change it out here, we can actually just drag it right in here. And you can see there, if I hold option command shift and drop it, it'll actually replace It'll actually swap out that instance right inside. So we can use this as an error icon. Uh, looks like Stefan has a question. Isn't hiding layers prone to create performance issues? Yeah, I guess it really depends on how many, uh, how many layers you've got in there that are hiding. I guess there's a quick test that you could always do. There is a, uh, there is a command here. Let me see if I can find it. Uh, it's under view probably. I don't use this very often, but there's actually a performance that you can actually show to see how your canvas is performing. Oh, it's been a while, it's been a while. Well, I'll find it for you all later. Apparently it's been so long that, uh, that I can't find it anymore. I wonder if it's because I'm in the beta, it doesn't have this, I'm actually using Figma beta. It's called resource, love it. Let's see if I can actually find that. There we go. Uh, great tip, if you remember what that command was, is that you can always hit command slash. You can actually just type into here uh, and it'll look up commands and all sorts of things. So we can see here how many, uh, you can actually hover and see what the statistics are on each thing. And um, if you double click it, you can actually dismiss it, but you can actually use this to help figure out uh, if you're starting to run into limitations. Um, personally, Stefan, I've actually never ran into anything, any performance issues when I'm actually like loading some of these things inside my components. So uh, I'm sure that it can happen and has happened though. Uh, do we have any other questions or should we just continue along? Ron, we have a few questions. Okay. Uh, Nash wants to know if you have any tips for best practices for text field height and font size for various screens. Yeah, I try to stick with the, uh, just the classic like 16 pixels, uh, no, no smaller than 16 pixels for text field, uh, like text size. So that's why all my labels are 16. Uh, helper text getting at 14 pixels is a little bit small but um, I think it's still relatively accessible. Uh, and then as far as text field height, uh, I believe there's uh, like in the HIG, there's actually like the Apple human interface guidelines. There's something around like 50 pixels, 48 to 60 pixels for like a touch for a finger size. So uh, I would look up in the HIG and see what that is. I always try to keep my text fields at around like 48 pixels high. Cool. And then Christian had a uh, question. He's curious about the inner and outer uh, auto layout button hack that you showed in the beginning. Is it expected that the inner button auto layout will stretch to the outer button? Yeah, absolutely. Um, so 
This is basically, I'll just go through like a very uh, simplistic example of this. Uh, and this is sort of a simple way of building a quick button in auto layout. So let's just throw a cool color on this. We'll get red, we'll grab some text. This is as simple as an example as it typically, uh, as you can do to create a button. So say I've got this, these two objects need to be my button. I'm gonna select both and hit Shift A. Uh, Figma knows when you do hit that, that, oh, this thing behind it, this rectangle needs to be the button. And then this text should be in the text. Uh, and right now it's horizontal auto layout, which means I cannot resize it horizontally, um, which kind of makes sense, right? Like that's exactly the purpose of auto layout is to say, oh, I automatically resize to my content. Now Figma also tries to figure out my padding and everything. So here we go. If I just type in some text, you can see that it's automatically resizing. Uh, but let's just say in a situation like this where I've got a big form and I'm working on that form now. So I'm gonna have a few things in this form and then I've got a button at the bottom Maybe that button is in this situation, maybe a little too, uh, a little too narrow. And a specific example of that might be when you're on a mobile mockup here. I don't know if I have a grid on this thing. I don't. But say you're on a mobile mockup, like a lot of times you want to be able to do your users a favor and give them a little bit larger hit target. And the one thing I hated about auto layout when it first came out is that this is kind of the scenario that we had. It was like, oh, I guess this is all we can do. So I never made my buttons with auto layouts. But if I now take this button and I put another auto layout container on it, uh, I'm just going to get rid of this default padding here because I don't need any of that. And I actually can resize this thing. I'll move that background fill to this layer. So it actually sizes with that and I'll just get it, get rid of it on this one. Now I can actually have this still be horizontal auto layout here. I can actually, if I'd like to manually resize this way. I do this a lot. Uh, I use a lot of like double wrappers like that, uh, especially if I'm using like a list item component or I'm trying to create like a menu, uh, but I want it to be able to resize to that, uh, to resize to that parent container, I can do that. The other thing we could also do here, if we didn't want to even deal with this kind of auto layout, but we wanted vertical, I could rip off the auto layout off this horizontal and just set it to stretch. And then that way it's always gonna stretch this way. And I can set my text to center and center that text this way. So there's a couple of different ways that you can build these things, but that's how I did it. I hope that helps. Any other questions? All right. Okay, so let's just get, let's, let's start using this thing and see how it works here. So I'm gonna put here in my placeholder text, I'm gonna put something like, uh, um, add your name. Or maybe it's like, Bob. This should be a hint, which you, you should put here. This will be first name. And let's just clone these things. I don't think I need a helper text for first name, so I'm just going to delete that. Now, when I delete that inside of an instance, It'll actually just turn it off. You can see it's right there. It'll just turn right back on. I also don't need this right icon as well. All right, now I'm gonna go ahead and just align this to my grid. Let's just align these two items here. We're gonna put last name here. All right, we have a first name, we have a last name. What else do we need? I think we needed a reason. We needed some kind of field. So let's do that. Let's see what we've created. We have not created ourselves uh, like a multi-line text field. So let's go see how hard it is to build something like that. So once again, we're gonna go back to this input structure. We're gonna drag it out here and I just kinda wanna see how it's gonna look and work here. Now, if I just resize this way, does it work? It's actually not bad, It's actually not bad. So what I need to do here is maybe get this right anchored icon. I need to do some alignment work on it. So let's go work with constraints on this. Uh, I think it's important that I kind of keep this input here so that you can see what's happening right here. So the reason why when I resize that, that this remains in the center is that I actually have constraints set up within this frame. As you can see here, this input structure is actually a frame. Right up here, you can see that it's a frame. So here, what I'm gonna wanna do is actually set up the constraints to be, I want it to be on the right, but I actually want it to be on the top. 
Now you should see that that'll just magically show up here. Now most inputs don't have these little icons in them. So by default, I'm just gonna turn those off. Those will be helpers for me to use if I want. All right, so we're gonna come back here and it looks like this text field is working out okay. Let's see if we can do anything here. Now, my first inclination would be this. My first inclination would be, I'm gonna take this thing here and then I'm gonna come into this input structure and I'm just going to resize it. The one thing, and it's a little bit of a shortcoming uh, with Figma, is that you can't resize elements within an, within an instance of a component. So I can't resize this here. Now, what I could do potentially is actually type in here if my component was set up right, but I've only set it up for a single line. But I could potentially type in there a bunch of lines and see that thing grow and grow and grow but maybe I don't want to do that. Maybe I just want to actually manually resize that. Um, I'm going to go ahead and see if there's any way that I can do this. All right, so right now, uh, maybe I've got a default size for a text field. So I'm going to show you a real quick little trick. Let's say this is my default height for my text field. I don't need a ton of different heights. Just for now, I just need this. Now, I'm going to take this input structure. I'm going to create a component, component around it, and I'm going to call this a multi-line. I think, what was our, yep, it was field slash, field slash multi-line text. Great. And let's see if it behaves like we want it to. Great, I'm just gonna put in here, multi-line text. That way we can see what it is. Okay, so what I'd like to do is use this here and create one of these for a multi-line version of that. So, if I'd like, I can do it a couple of ways. One way I can do is I can actually just come into here and go to this instance, and instead of input structure, I can actually, uh, and I, we'll see how well I, I organize this, but I can actually swap this thing out for the multi-line text here. Now, unfortunately, uh, we never set up this, uh, this text area here, this structure, to be like an auto layout and like a resizable container. So it actually just occupies the same space. So I could definitely show you some tricks around this, but in the name of just keeping things moving along, a way that we can actually do this would be to just construct a new one of these here out of uh, the same exact stuff here. So I'm going to take this here. I'm gonna move this down. This is a little bit more of a com complex field here. And I'm just gonna duplicate this. I'm gonna detach this. Uh, and right now it's just a frame and I'm going to take a instance of this and put this in here. Great. And I can actually, now I can manually resize it to fit here. Or the other thing I can do is actually use this button over here, resize to fit and it'll automatically just fit to the items within it. And we'll just go ahead and call this one. We'll make it a component and we'll go ahead and call it field. Uh, what do we call that field? This is going to be like a multi-line field. Great. Now it's set to vertical auto layout. That's great. If for some reason our helper text wraps some more, great. Everything's working perfect. Let's take a copy of that and come on over to our canvas. And I'm going to hit control G to turn my grid back on. Great. Now we have a um, tell us what, what, what you will be streaming. Now, one thing we noticed as we resize this is that for some reason we didn't have auto layout with stretch set. Now, if we just hit that, it'll work, but we might wanna do this in the master components so it works this way for every, everyone's instances. Oops, I'm not gonna go to detach. What I'm gonna do here is go to the master component. And I just wanna set this one to stretch. I forgot to do that. If I come back here, we see now, yep, looks like it's working perfectly. Awesome. I'm going to center align this to my grid. Now, one thing, and I kind of showed this trick last time, what if we want this to be flexible and scale to those, uh, this grid to these margins and these gutters? As long as you have them set as constraints left and right on each of these, what Figma will do to these components is it will try to scale them and keep them on that grid. Now let's just look really quick at what that grid looks like. 
So this desktop grid here, I've set it up as a shared style, a grid style, and you can see it's a 12, uh, it's a 12 count stretch grid uh, with certain gutters and margins. But we could set up almost anything here. We could set up fixed columns, could be 320 pixel width columns or anything like that. Let's just see how these things respond. This is great, you can see that it responds here. Now if you ever get to a point where like it's getting so scrunched here, uh, one plugin I believe that we have, it's called Responsive. Uh, it's a responsive plugin. And go check that out. It's got some pretty cool little tricks where it can actually auto wrap stuff to the next line. We're not gonna go through that in the stream as we're getting close to time. Uh, I'll pause just for a second before we get our buttons out and we actually build a checkbox and then we'll be done. Let's see if we have any last questions. Hello. Um Chris wants to know, how do you create an auto layout cell with text and a separator on the bottom? You want that cell to grow vertically when the text grows, yet the separator should always stay at the bottom. All right. Can you repeat that one more time? I just want to make sure I got this right. Yeah. How do you create an auto layout cell with text and a separator on the bottom? I want the cell to grow vertically when the text grows, yet the separator should always stay at the bottom of the cell. Yeah, so um, let's see, let's see. I'm guessing uh, if this was the text cell, uh, and Chris, if I don't answer this correctly, uh, hit me up with a Figma file and I will jump right in with you and let's figure this out. I've got a lot of really cool examples for auto layout that I can help with, but let's say, um, let's say this is gonna be a text field and we're gonna set it to auto layout. Uh, we'll set it to vertical. Let's just go ahead and make it that size. I'm gonna set this text over here. Uh, I'm gonna set it to stretch in here. And I want to just keep typing. You can see that that's growing vertically. Now, if you had a separator or something underneath that, I'm not quite sure what you mean by a separator, but we can easily just take, let's say you meant a line like this, like a horizontal rule. We can easily take, let's say two of these things like this, and we can take this, and instead of making this into a component, we just have an auto layout frame around it. I'm gonna hit Shift A again. And if I type here, this will just keep growing here. But if I type up here, that'll keep pushing this down here, and that separator remains here. Now I can always push that down if it needs to be down here. I'm not sure if I fully answered that for you, but I would love to be able to help you. I love complex uh, challenges, so Hit me up with a Figma leak uh, at my Twitter profile, and I'll absolutely be able to help you there. All right, so let's go ahead and get our button out here. Let's find the button that we created. I know it's a mess here, but hey, who cares? We're coming in, we're gonna add our button here. Now, I like my, I love using auto layout containers to make sure that everything's perfectly spaced apart because I don't like doing this thing where I constantly have to rearrange these things. So what I'm gonna do here is I'm gonna select these both and do an auto layout container around them. It won't move, but it's actually now in a container. That means if I did resize this to say this size, you can see the other one's gonna pull in. Then I'm gonna take these three things and I'm gonna select them and hit Shift A to do an auto layout container around them. That way I can actually control the spacing in between. And I wanna control that to be 48 pixels. This way, I have now a frame, like a, a form frame. And if I need a second line of text or say I need that email address, let's just copy this field. I'm gonna just paste it in here. And you can see that it actually uh, pasted at the bottom. If I simply just hit up and down, it'll actually jog the order and move it up in the stack here. So this is gonna be my email field, email. And if I ever wanna make sure that this field here is actually left aligned, if I come up here in the auto layout properties for this child, and what I mean by a child is it's a child element of an auto layout frame, I can actually just hit left and now I've got my email address there, great. Maybe I want this last name to be out here, I can just drag it out here. Uh, and then you can see that I'm eliminating all of this busy work for me as a designer, constantly moving things around in here and having to readjust. All right, so for this button, maybe I do want it to be a little bit bigger, but notice that I did not set up my sizing right on this. 
So I'm gonna go back here to my master component for that button and examine what I did wrong. So it looks like here my problem was is that my button structure, if I, if I resize this, my button is resizing, but my structure is not stretching to it. So if I select the structure and hit stretch and just test this thing out, see how it works, whoops. Ah, there it is, it works just right, all right. So we're gonna come back here. Now we can see that this is magically fixed. You can type in here, submit. All right. Now I can go ahead and make a checkbox, uh, but I'd rather, I think I've displayed how to do some of these things. I'd rather answer questions if I can. Can we change the length of an email text field now? So what do you mean by that, uh, Dinesh? Right now I can actually change this if I'd like and I can change the length of this. You can also put example. Now, because remember text fields are not set up to be auto, auto layout. Uh, and the reason is, is that I like designing all my text fields on a grid. I'm not gonna, it's not gonna be able to actually work. So it'll just keep on going larger and larger and larger if I put in content, kind of like your old style design. Yep, we can definitely change that email text. All right, Osra, do we have any more questions? We've only got a few more minutes and I wanna uh, take on any challenges that I can to help y'all out. Um, yeah, we have someone wants to know, can you show how to make the input fields responsive to the grid? Not sure if I'm following. No problem, I can do a really, let me do a, um, just a very, yeah, let's do it right here on this mobile one. So we're gonna just add a grid. Let's just start from scratch. We're gonna add a grid here. I'm gonna put a columnar grid here. Uh, let's just go ahead and maybe say we have eight columns. We've got a little bit of a margin, maybe it's 16. And the gutter is 16 pixels as well. So there's our grid. Now, if I just put, uh, let's, let's just work with very simplistic structures. I'm not even gonna use a component. And let's just say we had uh, items on this grid a little bit like this. And they're snapping. You can see that, uh, can't feel it, but you can see it. As I stretch it over here, it kind of snaps to that grid item. Now I'm just going to option drag this over here and show you what the default behavior is. I don't really know what this is gonna do. Oh, look, this is probably what you would run into. Nothing's really working. But if I come to these items here, and I set the constraints to left and right. Right now they're set on left. So they're just trying to align to the left. But if I set the constraints on these two, and this is a bit of a hidden Figma feature. I didn't figure this out until probably a month ago. It's kind of changed a lot of way that I design now. If I set constraints to left and right now, fingers crossed that it actually will just align right to that. Now, the other thing about constraints is I never set my mobile nav up with constraints. I need to set that to also left and right and just bring that over here. Let's see if this works. Great, now let's see if that actually even works with the nav. What if the nav actually was in like this a bit? What if it was kind of a floating nav? Will this still honor that? And yep, it'll honor it and stay on the grid right there. Hope that helped. Any other questions, y'all? Thanks for all the great questions. I think that's it for today, Raji. You can always answer them on Twitter. All right, that sounds great. Let's go ahead and uh, just show you show you all that uh, we'll always upload these at figma.com. Oh, I'm sorry, we'll always upload these to youtube.com slash figma design. But if you ever wanna see any future events or register for those, those are at figma.com slash events. That's my email right there. Uh, please, I invite you to email me, ask me questions. This is quite literally my job. So if you'd like to DM me on Twitter uh, at Raji uh, and you have any like a Figma file for me to jump into, I would love to do that. Love to help you out. Thank you everyone for showing up uh, to build it in Figma.